G'day and welcome back to RC Model Reviews. Now a little bit more on this X220S, the EA Sheen Wizard. A lot of people said, oh, did you get the port set up properly with the port set up? Well, I've got to say, out of the box, I didn't change anything and it didn't work. So it's unlikely that the setup was wrong. But I did go through, as I said in the comments, I went through and checked out all the port settings. I'm going to show you now. This is the, uh, let's connect to this thing. A bit hard for me to see with the camera at this angle, but let's connect. Here we go. And let's go over to ports. Here we are. Now hopefully you can see there, I've got UART6 enabled. And this is connected to the S-Bus pad on the F4 Omnibus flight controller. So, bing, it should be working, right? Let's go back to the RC receiver. And as I said, we've got nothing, nothing. And yes, this is set up correctly. I've tried this. This is on S-Bus. Um, the receiver's outputting S-Bus, nothing. That port seems to be dead. So what I'm going to try and do today is use a different port. First of all, I'll try using the non-inverted pin for UART 6. And if that doesn't work, I'll try using UART 3 probably. And we'll use IBUS because you can't use S-Bus on pin 3 without an inverter. So we'll use IBUS on, pin, on UART 3 and set the ports accordingly. See whether that fixes the problem. Bear with me while we do that. Right, so here's what I've done. I've taken the signal lead, which comes from the receiver, which was previously S-Bus. That's this white wire. I've taken that off the pad here, which is the inverting input for UART 6 on this board. That's the input that has an inverter on it, so you can use S-Bus. Now, the other side of that inverter is down here. This is the receive input for, for UART 6 down here. Hopefully you can see that. I'll tip that up a little bit, perhaps so you can see. And I've soldered it onto there. So I've bypassed the inverter on UART 6, which means I can't run S-Bus anymore because S-Bus requires an inverter, but I can run I-Bus. And these little receivers do I-Bus, and the transmitter does I-Bus. So I'm now going to set it up and see if I can get it to work with I-Bus. If it doesn't work, then it's actually the UART on the F4 controller that's buggered, and I'll have to use a different UART, probably number 3. So let's try it this way first, see what happens. On the transmitter here, I'm going to change to I-Bus. So where are we? Uh, go Enter, Up. Hold down the escape to save that. Just We'll just check that it has been saved. Yes, it has. So let's... So now we have iBus coming out of the transmitter. And I'm not sure with these receivers whether I have to change that to iBus as well because if you hold the bind button down for two seconds, it'll change from iBus to SBus. We'll see what happens. We'll try it either way. Right, what I'm going to have to do here is go into configuration because now we're running iBus. So I'm going to have to go down here and... Excuse this, there's a real pain trying to do this with the camera in shot and trying to see what I'm doing here. We want to go to iBus down here. iBus, that should work. And then I'll go and save that and reboot. Right, let's check and see whether that has actually changed. Save that configuration because that's going to be kind of important found sometimes things don't always save like they should, but let's have a look. What are we on? iBus. That's good. So let's go back to ports. Make sure the ports are still, we should still be on UART 6. Yes, we are. Serial receiver. Let's get into receiver. See if anything's working. No. Still nothing working. Now I'm going to try the little button on the little bind button and see whether changing that to iBus is going to solve the problem. Whoa, now we're working, look, now she's cooking with gas, now we've got it going. So the inverter on the flight controller here is obviously buggered. Um, now that I've gone to iBus and I'm bypassing the inverter, I'm getting everything working as it should. So there you go, it was a faulty flight controller, the inverter on this F4 board is buggered, so it doesn't matter, I'm just going to use iBus. So now I'll set this thing up, maybe we'll get a test flight in, woohoo, except for the weather's so crap, but I'll see what I can do, but there you go. So it wasn't me, it wasn't my setup, it wasn't anything I did, it was a faulty flight controller out of the box. But fortunately, only the inverter was stuffed. Right, so I'm putting the lid back on it, we're putting it back together. One thing I noticed, which a lot of other people have commented on too, is that there is not a drop of Loctite in this entire model. Look, there's the screws that have come out of the top. No Loctite on there, this has never had Loctite on it. So others have reported that the motors fall off because the screws that hold them on, these are soft mounted, and the screws have no Loctite. So... Um, yeah, I think the first thing you're going to have to do if you buy one of these is strip it down, put Loctite on all the screws, because otherwise, probably fly apart in the air. Oh wow, I'm just doing the, putting Loctite on the motor bolts. This is worse than I thought. Some of the bolts are actually 
a, a full turn out. They weren't even seated home. I mean, and you don't do these up tight because it's a soft mount, but they were actually poking out. They were, the heads were proud of the, the LED strip, so they'd actually backed off a turn already just in transit. So this, and there's no Loctite whatsoever on these bolts. Look, I'll take one out. I haven't done this one yet. Let's take these out. Look, look, look at this. Look, look, that's, there's a whole half a turn before it even starts encountering resistance. So these bolts aren't even nearly tight enough. And if we have a look at it, not a drop of Loctite on there. So Stewie from UAV Futures just reviewed or did the bench review of, of one of these and he loved it. But God, am I, am I the only one who has all these issues? I don't think I am. Other people have commented on it. So I think Stewie's glossed over a few of those. Um, he loves this thing. I wonder if it'll fall apart, although I noticed he was quite clever. Um, if we look down in here, see in here? This is where the video transmitter goes. There's no access to anything in there. That's how it comes out of the box. Stewie's turned his around. He didn't say anything about it, but he's turned it around so you can see the LED. So I wonder if he's covering up a few little flaws there. <laughs> Stewie uh, always likes to look on the bright side of things, but this machine, uh, as I say, totally objective review here. And we'll see, it'll be interesting to see how my flight review compares to Stu's flight review. So um, if he's already done that review, I'll put a link in the description of this one. Otherwise, keep an eye on the UAV Futures channel. Have a look at what Stewie has to say about this thing. He's far kinder about it than I am. Um, doesn't seem to have found anywhere near as many problems as I have. But uh, stay tuned. It's always good to get multiple inputs on a, on a product because people have different perspectives. I'm known to be a bit of a picky reviewer. I like to find the things that are not quite right so that when you buy something, you know what to expect. I mean, basically, it's easy to take something out of the box and look at all the good points and go and fly it and say, it's fantastic. But I don't know, if you then go and buy one and there's a few niggly issues that you, you would have liked to have known about, it can be a bit disappointing. So, yeah, I do nitpick a little bit. But in this case, I don't think a faulty flight controller is nitpicking and I don't think screws that aren't even finger tight, um, you know, the, the, the half a turn out, I don't think that's... Fault uh, nitpicking either, especially when there's no Loctite on them. Oh, well, this will take me a, another 20 minutes, I suppose, to do all these bolts, but there you go. So there she is, all ready to go. I'll put the props on, of course, but uh, yep, it's fixed. Um, so, some more thoughts just before I fly it. As I suggested before, it's kind of like a, um, it's a kit. It's a kit. They've already sort of thrown it together very roughly, so you have to take all the screws out and re Loctite them. The quality control, well, you know, you're getting a broken flight controller. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's EA Sheen make products to a price, and this is a very competitively priced product. So you, you don't expect it to be top of the line. You expect it to be some shortcuts, and there are some shortcuts. I mean, as I say, the frame's not full carbon. The, uh, you know, the way they've done things inside here, the soldering's a little bit how you're going. Um, I haven't changed any of the soldering. I've left it as it is. I was tempted to tidy it up. The wires are too short, so I'd have to extend them. And I thought, no, nah, let's just fly it and see if smoke comes out of it. It's a better indication of, of the build quality. If this thing bursts into flames because two of the wires short out on an ESC, then you'll know what the story is. If it doesn't, then that's fine. We can say, well, you know, it looks rough, but it's good enough. And so what I'll do now is I'll charge the battery up. We'll take it out. It'll be interesting to see how well it performs today because it's another really crap-ass day. So this camera here will be challenged likewise. So it's probably a good day to test fly. It's a fair bit of wind. <clears throat> so there could be some issues um, in terms of precision, which means we're going to get probably get some crashes. And again, that'll test out this this um, semi-carbon frame. See how strong the damn thing is. In the meantime, there you go. Now I will go and uh, charge the batteries, and hopefully, now we'll cut to the flight test. Uh, one thing I noticed: I didn't go through the bits and pieces you get with this thing. There you get some carbon fiber spanners, which are really, you know, about as useless as a bloody chocolate teapot. Um, you get the nuts for the motors, of course, and here's another bag of things, which I couldn't figure out initially why it was included. I thought, why would they include so many spare screws? But then when you realise there's no Loctite, you're going to be forever replacing screws because the damn things will fall out unless you take them out and Loctite them. So they must know about the screw issue. And I guess it's cheaper just to throw in an extra bag of screws than actually have someone put Loctite on the screws when they assemble it. Who'd have thought? Who'd have thought? I think that's all your basic... Oh, and you get some cable ties too for holding on the uh, camera mount. So... I'll put the camera mount on before we fly it. Now, what was I saying about detail? Well, here's the camera mount, as you can see, um, which will go uh, this way on the model, right? And they give you cable ties, but the cable ties are not long enough to mount the camera mount. Oh, seriously? I mean, so what are these for? I don't know. Uh, Fortunately, I have my own much longer cable ties, which I shall use. But again, this is supposed to be an RTF. Why do you have to provide your? Why, did, why don't they just provide the right size of cable tie? Um, hopefully, EA Sheen are going to be looking at this video and sorting out all the little issues that I've found on this machine. If they do, it could be quite a good machine. If it flies well and if they sort out the issues, it could be a winner. But at the moment, no, not so much. 
Right, done. I've only used one cable tie. Maybe I should use two. I don't know. We'll find out how it flies. Um, now, the interesting thing is I've been quite critical on this machine, as you've seen, but not without, not, not unduly critical. I think I've highlighted the issues that, I, that a would-be buyer would want to know about before they laid out their hard-earned cash. Um, and it's interesting. I wonder if EA Sheen will ever send me another product after this. I know Walkera did for a while, but to be honest, the Walkera products, they were deficient in quite a number of areas, and I think they eventually gave up on me because I wasn't uh, the typical raving reviewer. I was the guy that pointed out the flaws in some of their products. So I don't get any more products from Walkera, but that's fine. Um, that's not a problem. And also, remember FreeSky? Um, I sort of catapulted their original 2.4 system to fame. Since I criticised the Horus and, and said I didn't like it, I've received no more product from them and also they don't, they don't even answer my emails now so it's always a risk you take when you're a reviewer if you really criticize something then you run the risk that people are going to say we won't send our stuff to him because he finds fault in it but I wish these companies would wake up and realize hey let's send the stuff out first before we release it even and get some feedback from someone like myself who finds these things now if if EA Sheen had sent me this on a uh, on a non-disclosure basis and I'd had a look at it, I could have pointed out all those faults and flaws and hopefully, hopefully they could have fixed them before they started shipping the final production model and the result would have been a hell of a lot more happy customers and when I did actually review the production unit, I should have found it to be a fantastic piece of kit. So I hope manufacturers learn that I'm here if you want me to take a look at your product, I don't charge, I'll have a look at it, I'll make suggestions as to how it could be improved or you know what I think is wrong with it and then you can produce a better product at the other end. So the offer is open if you're making anything in the RC hobby flying models industry. Drop me a line if you've got something you're thinking of releasing it, and I'll give you my open and honest opinion. And as always, I do not disclose anything to any other manufacturer or supplier. Everything's treated in the ultimate confidence. So there you go. But now, finally, finally, let's charge the battery and go fly this damn thing. Okay, here we are at the local park to have a bit of a fly, and uh, as you can see, this thing, you know, it flies. What can I say? Little lights on the back shine, and there you go. It seems to handle quite well. It's quite sprightly. I did notice it did feel mushy, actually, in throttle, and why is that? Now, here's the onboard footage, and there's a lot of flickering in that video. Uh, my pagoda antenna may not be the best quality. I never got this much flickering the other day when I was flying a different quad in the same area with a 200 milliwatt transmitter. This is set to 200 milliwatts on here. Yeah, I just, I'm just not impressed with that video link, and I'm pretty sure it's probably down to the antenna. So I'll try another antenna in the same location at another time and see what happens. Now, one thing to note, look at the battery voltage at the top of the screen there. This is the 75C 1500 milliamp battery that came with the quad, and it was fully charged when I took off, apart from uh, perhaps 20 seconds of line of sight I did before. And look at it, it's already down to 14.3, 14.5 volts. It is such a soft battery. It is nowhere near 75C. In fact, at one stage, I punch the cord and it drops down to below 11 volts. I mean, really, seriously? Um, how long, we've been flying a minute and a half now, and it's down to 14.1, 14.1. So I think probably it's a combination of those props, which really, really suck the juice and also the battery itself. I did try later on with another battery, as you'll see, and it performed much better. Now, handling, eh, not much to say. It, it handles quite nicely, as you'd expect a quad with an F4 to handle. And so perhaps I will just play a little video, a little music or something in the video now. You can enjoy, if you can call it that, my rather lame flight with the Wizard X220S.
right here we are at the end of that flight it was it was only uh, less probably three minutes or so but look at the minimum battery voltage you went down to 11.6 on a punch out that is terrible that battery is so soft um i really wouldn't recommend using the stock battery it just doesn't have what it takes it's probably i say it's all built to a budget and when you go budget on batteries you just get disappointing performance so what i did was i took a freshly charged was it Turnigy Nanotech 1345 C battery? And I thought, well, let's have another flight and see how it goes. Now this time I'm gonna show you the Runcam 3 footage and the uh, live FPV camera footage so you can get a comparison. And it shows that that little FPV camera isn't actually too bad at all. It's really working kind of well. So uh, again, I'll just let you listen this time to the motors in the background so you can hear try and get a correlation between motor power and the reaction of the quad because sometimes that's really useful information. But again, notice that patterning. Ah, oh, hate that patterning on the video, damn it. So in summary, this is not a bad quad from a flight perspective. I mean, it's well specced and the motors are pretty talky. I'm gonna fly it again, as I say, with a different FPV antenna and with different propellers because I have a feeling those props are really not doing it any service at all. They may be clones of the race flight ones, but I don't know. They just don't seem to perform for me. And a few other reviewers have noted the same thing. So maybe they're just a bad copy. Anyway, um, yeah, ah, uh, flight performance, good can't really grizzle too much about it. It flies quite well. Even lands upside down with a half twist. How's that? Pretty good. That time notice only 14.1. That the, the nanotech battery is just so much better uh, with all that flying. 14.1 was the lowest that the voltage got to. So the battery that comes with it, meh, it's okay. Perhaps for learning to hover, but oh, I wouldn't go racing with it. That's for sure. There you go. Questions, comments in the usual place. Thank you for watching and stay tuned. There'll be another video on this coming up soon.